who continually shell, uh, sells me short is our next guest. His name is Dennis Pitta, and he joins us on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. What's up, Dennis? What's up, guys? How's it going? It's going well. It's a game it's day. Well, I yes. always love a Friday game day. Did you like Friday game days as a player? Yeah, I always like Friday because you get a couple extra days off. You get Saturday and Sunday off and go back to work Monday. So, Friday's fun. It's usually a you know nationally televised game. or you know Back, back when we were on the mountain, we that took was advantage fun. of those ESPN games. So. <laughs> Yeah, there were there were some great memories uh, back in the day on TV. There, uh, no one can see them, but they were great. Uh, Thursday, I want to <laughs> ask you about this. So I'm a Seahawks fan. Thursday night football, a bunch of dude, like seven dudes get hurt last night. You a fan of Thursday night games when you played? You know, I was just having this conversation with somebody this morning about Thursday night football. They asked me the same question: Did you like playing on Thursday night? Because really, when you when you look on Twitter or social media, most players are very much against playing on Thursday night. It was the opposite. I really like Thursday night and for a couple of reasons. Number one, once you're done Thursday, you get another mini bye week. You get the whole, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, usually Monday or Tuesday again off. And so you get a lot of rest period after that game. Now, it is more difficult physically going from a Sunday game to a Thursday game, but leading up to that game, you don't practice at all. So you have meetings and really your practice consists of walkthroughs. So the, the whole week of Thursday night, other than having to play a little bit earlier in the week and not physically be fully recovered uh it's an easier week and so i really enjoyed it i always take the easy way out you know that germ (laughs) (laughs) well classic (laughs) so uh in uh, in the world we live in today uh dennis byu is a three and a half point underdog at unlv what's your reaction to that well you guys always throw the vegas lines at me like i'm some kind of gambling shark (laughs) Week, it's just context. Yes, it's context that people don't think <laughs> BYU will win this game. Um, my reaction to that is I'll take BYU in the points in this game because, listen, I, I think, you know, it's been stated all week, we've never lost to UNLV at UNLV. And I think that plays a little bit into this game. Now, it's a pretty fairly matched game when you look at the schedule, the teams that they've played against the teams that we've played. You know, I think we're similar teams. Um, so it, it's not going to be easy, but you know, if we get four points going there to play, I like it. I'll take our chances. Do you expect BYU to win the game outright? Uh, I do, to be honest. Um, I expect us to win. I think a lot of that certainly depends on who's under center, and I don't know if that's even been you know figured out yet. But uh, my vote would be Bo Tanner, not Bo Tanner. Bo Hutch. Hey, just Bo Tanner, just put Bo Tanner out there. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> two and eight, Bo Tanner. You're There's so many there. Bo's and Tanner's on this team. It's understandable. There's, there's too many. There's way too many. Bo Hodge would be my pick. And just because of the versatility he gives you on the ground, and uh, I think this offense needs to be tailored to his strength if he's going to be the quarterback. And, you know, I, I think he gives us a chance. And so it's going to be a good game. Don't get me wrong. I think it's going to be one that we have to play well in in order to get a win. But I think it's time where we start figuring things out and – you know, we get a win out in UNLV. BYU has three regular season games left and not a ton to play for per se. Uh, we've talked to you about kind of the motivation there and whatnot, but BYU hasn't been in this situation for a long time, and you, you played on one team that, you know, had a losing record. Once you're not bowl eligible, what what's that like for for the players going into a game? Well, it's difficult, and uh, – I think the only year that I played where I was not bowl eligible was 2004, my freshman year, which um, I think we were five and six that year. And that was the last year you didn't go to a bowl? There you go. And that was uh, Coach Croton's last year there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult because – and I can relate to this a little bit, and I, and I told you guys about this a few weeks back playing in the NFL. And every season we've always had something to play for. We've always had, you know, playoff hopes till the very end. Last season was the first season that we didn't have that. Week 17, we had just come off a lost Christmas Day to Pittsburgh. We were then playing Cincinnati. We had no chance of making the postseason or winning the division or anything. So we had nothing to play for. And so we didn't handle that game very well. And I'm probably not the best, you know, to ask this question to because I'm not very good at, you know, handling that. You know, I think your mindset, number one, is um, come out healthy, which, you know, that was always (laughs) going into that last week of last season, that was my mindset. You have one week to go, you're playing for nothing. Make sure you don't suffer some kind of injury 
that's going to inhibit your ability to work hard all off season and, and you know set yourself up to to be in good shape going into next season. And so that's certainly going to go through players' minds whether you want to you know realize that or not because you know, these guys want to come out healthy. They want to be able to kind of build on what they did this year and set themselves up for next year. But the motivation is going to be you know get my position solidified for next year. And you talk about the quarterback position especially. Who's going to be the quarterback next year? Well, we're going to find out over these three games. Those guys are going to have motivation to play well and, and prove that they can be the guy. Dennis, you mentioned injuries a second ago. And unfortunately, last week we saw an injury to, to Tanner Mangum. Uh, ruptured his Achilles. He's done for the year. And, and unfortunately, uh, you're someone that can speak to this. But with the injuries that you had, explain to us and, and the, the listeners – what is that moment like when you get the word that your season is done? Is it something that, that kind of hits you all of a sudden? I mean, like from a mental standpoint, how difficult is that news to receive? It's really difficult to receive. And uh, I can remember uh, my first hip injury. And unfortunately, I've had a lot of experience with uh, season-ending injuries in the last few years. But my first hip injury, I was placed on IR. And I remember... I got whisked away to the hospital right after being injured, got put under, went under surgery. And when I woke up, is the first that I really knew what had happened to me. I didn't really know the extent of the injury before going into surgery. Um, and I didn't really know what they had to do in surgery to repair it. And so I didn't know if I would be put on IR or if I was going to be out you know, a few weeks or what it might be. And so the doctor came in and gave me the news that, yeah, we're putting you on IR. And it hits you like a ton of bricks. That was the first time in my career I was going to miss a season. And it's a, it's a surreal moment. You you know, everything, it's just a strange position to be put in, especially when you've never experienced it before. So you, you feel bad for these guys that are suffering these season-ending injuries. And unfortunately, I've suffered season-ending injuries and career-ending injuries. And unfortunately, the latter is, is a little bit worse than the season-ending injury. But it's difficult to deal with mentally. And, and a lot of times you're not prepared to. And you just one of those things where you just got to focus day-to-day on on working hard and getting better and making sure you're back uh, better than ever. That's the challenge for a, a guy like uh, Tanner Mangum going into next season. Let's wrap with this. Who's BYU's best player in the NFL right now, in your opinion? Um, I think I think Vic Yonsa's, you know, far and away our best player in the NFL, and he, he's so dynamic off the edge. He's going to get paid a lot of money here in the, in the upcoming years to do what he does, and I've played against him a couple times. Uh, on Detroit, and he's a tough guy to block. He's he's so athletic and big and long and able to create serious mismatches on the edge. And so um, Detroit's going to pay him a lot of money to stick around and continue putting pressure on quarterbacks. So uh, you you look at other guys in the NFL, and we have some good players. You look at Thomas Benoit in his role with the Patriots. I think he's settled into a really nice spot there, and he's playing really good football. And Daniel Sorensen, who's you know playing at a really high level for uh, Kansas City and doing a really good job. So. We've got some players around the league right now that are contributing and playing really well, but I think far and away Ziggy Ounce is our best player. Amen to that. Dennis, we appreciate the time, man, and uh, enjoy the weekend. Hey, thank you, guys. From one athlete to two non-athletes, it's been a pleasure. Okay, and you're done. That's Dennis Pitta on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. Desert First, your value is your timeline, your finance.